the part regarding the strategy and the uh, action plan. Um, Francisca will uh, uh, present you some um, some uh, uh, common elements and uh, methods regarding this uh, this part. Uh, so um, I lay. Thank you, Francisca. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so basically, uh, you can see here, so everything that we are presenting you to today is basically the following the process of how to uh, build up um, your adaptation strategy. So starting with what we have seen uh, earlier this morning, starting with uh, the vulnerability assessment of your territory, um, then uh, building up the strategic vision of adaptation on your territory. And so now uh, the next step is basically to concretely operationalize this uh, political or strategic vision. Uh, so concretely um, building an action plan. And uh, so uh, the uh, these all of these um, phases that have uh, come before uh, the development of the action plan uh, also uh, contribute uh, basically to identifying uh, the main priorities, the main needs, um, and this is um, specifically done through uh, the um, all of the co-construction work, um, which is done before with the different uh, stakeholders and actors of the territory. So this is why it is very important that at every phase it is a, a participative uh, and open uh, process that allows a uh, lot of different actors to um, express their their needs, their priorities, their worries um, about uh, the issues of the of uh, the effect of of climate change. And so the discussions uh, with uh, these different actors, on the one hand, the analysis of uh, different studies, uh, data, etc., on the other, uh, will already have um, uh, given you some material that will help you to um, uh, build up a first um, uh, list uh, uh, portfolio, basically, of different actions. Uh, that um, seem relevant to answer, uh, to, to give an answer to the different challenges that you have identified uh, for your territory in, in the assessment phase. Uh, so once you have this first um, portfolio of actions, we can uh, go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the idea is basically, okay, so how uh, do we organize uh, all of these different measures? How do we prioritize them? How do we better understand um, uh, what um, uh, to what challenges they are connected, and um, uh, and uh, also to to see which uh, of these actions finally we will actually keep in our action plan or not, because often it is very difficult to do everything uh, if you have limited uh, financial means, uh, time, etc., to um, to dedicate to uh, to this program. And so here we wanted to give you uh, basically some examples. Uh, some um, examples of uh, methods of how you can uh, classify uh, your uh, initial uh, portfolio uh, of actions uh, by different uh, categories. So first of all, you can ask yourself what are uh, finally the stakes uh, that these actions uh, relate to. So basically, um, do we want to um, implement measures uh, which will um, uh, have impact, positive impact on, on the health of vulnerable uh, populations? Do we want to increase uh, damages on, uh, on critical infrastructure? Do we want to address losses uh, that we are observing in agricultural sectors, et cetera, et cetera? So basically, concretely, what are the different um, stakes that we have identified in our vulnerability assessment and what are the measures that we can take to uh, address them? So uh, this is basically a, a first way of, of categorizing, which really relates to the exercise of the vulnerability assessment. Um, another method uh, that we suggest is uh, more basically by thematic categories, which often corresponds to the way that the organization or the local authority is uh, organized, because we will often have a, a sectoral um, uh, thematic organizations of department, which are one department responsible for urban planning, another for mo mobility, another for the building sector. And so basically organizing your different measures uh, according to uh, this um, these thematic departments already helps to assign responsibility and to see uh, really which um, actors, uh, local officials, uh, technical agents and the local authority, etc., will be responsible for um, implementing and monitoring uh, these different measures. 
another approach is uh, a tip, um, the, the types of actions related to adaptation. So in general, we see that in, um, uh, in an adaptation strategy, we will have three different categories uh, of measures. Uh, so first of all, uh, the um, uh, what we call soft adaptation measures, uh, so which will be related to um, uh, to uh, capacity building, to improving the different uh, mapping and and planning processes, for example, for urban planning, on to how to better articulate them with um, the challenges related to climate change, uh, how to better integrate uh, the issue of adaptation in uh, these strategies. Um, and then we have uh, the technical or gray solutions, uh, which are generally infrastructure based. So um, uh, basically the refurbishment of buildings, uh, examples such as um, physical flood defenses or also uh, infrastructure uh, related to uh, to sewage system, uh, the protection of critical infrastructures, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this is another uh, category. And then finally, we will have the ecological or green um, uh, solutions, um, which will be everything related to to uh, green infrastructure and especially nature-based solutions, um, which we will find in this. And so usually uh, the objective is uh, that in the portfolio you will not have of your actions and your action plan, you will not only have one type of action, so for example only soft adaptation measures, but um, no uh, operational or infrastructure related uh, actions, but the idea is to have a mix um, between these uh, different categories uh, to kind of balance out the different actions that, that you will take um, in, in your plan. And uh, finally, again, related to the, the concept of adaptation, you can also question yourself uh, for each action. Is this a measure which um, uh, induces an incremental adaptation? So basically, which maintains the system um, uh, as it is, or are we um, uh, more uh, towards a transformational adaptation, uh, knowing that um, usually the, both of them will not necessarily be on the same uh, time scale. So incremental adaptation will be maybe more short term and transformational adaptation will often be, or at least the impacts uh, that we can observe will be more uh, long term. Uh, and finally, to also uh, see if uh, the measures that you're taking are um, actually um, aiming at uh, increasing the uh, adaptive capacity of the organization, which will often be the case of a lot of soft adaptation measures, for example, or, uh, or is the um, objective of the measure to reduce the exposition or the sensitivity uh, of the territory or of a certain structure to um, uh, climate change impact, which will often be the case of, for example, more infrastructural uh, solutions. So uh, I think this is a good method to uh, classify and uh, then prioritize uh, the different um, actions that you have identified at the at the first stage. Um, so then we can uh, continue to the to the next slide. Yes, um, and so um, like we said, when we have to um, uh, there will often be a, a difference between uh, the initial portfolio of actions that you drew up in the beginning with all of the different start stakeholders, which will often be very large, and then finally the um, prioritized uh, selection that will um, compose your action plan um, in the end, uh, because we have to uh, look for every kind of action what is actually uh, feasible uh, and what is also the budget that we uh, have that to dedicate to these different actions. And so uh, some of the uh, most like the three most important points to, to, to look at is on the one hand, what is the um, temporality of the actions? So are these measures uh, something that I can implement uh, right away or all of the um, um, things that I need to implement this action already? Um, uh, there are the actors uh, mobilized, uh, aware of these issues and ready to help me in uh, implementing these actions. Um, or will I have to have some preparatory uh, phases? For example, first uh, do uh, some um, some measures of uh, awareness raising in internally in the local authority to also make, for example, elected officials more aware of this to have a stronger political um, support for more um, costly or operational actions that I will only be able to implement later in the process. 
Um, and also, when will the impact of these actions actually uh, be observed? So are we uh, on actions that will have a very short term uh, impact where quickly we will be able to see the results or are we more on a long term planning where it will take a lot of time uh, to see the actual effect that the that the measures taken will will actually have on the territory. So this is, is, is one question of the, the timing. Uh, and then, of course, also the, the degree of, uh, of uh, feasibility of the different actions. Uh, so again, do I have the, um, the human resources uh, necessary to implement the actions? Uh, am, as a local authority, am I the one uh, responsible uh, for directly implementing these actions? Or do I need the help of other um, maybe private or, or um, actors or actors that are on a higher territorial level? And if so, are there already relationships with these actors in place that I can rely on so that I know that they will help me in the implementation of this action, that they can be responsible, um, that I can assign them responsibility for uh, the implementation and, and monitoring of this action? Or there again, does there, has to be, does there have to be an initial phase of... Um, uh, creating connections with the private sector that will be concerned of raising awareness about these issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, the feasibility is also um, related to uh, the budget that is available uh, for the implementation of the actions. And so uh, we see that there is um, uh, basically um, different uh, ways of uh, assessing the feasibility or the benefits of uh, the different measures. And uh, so one uh, method that is often used uh, for um, public policies is that of cost benefit. Uh, and um, uh, we will see that this is not necessarily the best solution in uh, the case of an adaptation strategy. So maybe we can pass to the next slide. Thank you. So um, the difficulty with uh, cost benefits uh, analysis is that it's a purely economic assessment. So basically, we will have to assign a monetary value uh, to measure the effect uh, uh, of every action that we uh, that we will assess. So on the one hand, uh, a monetary value assigned to the cost. Uh, what is the budget that we have to mobilize to implement this action? But then also, uh, what is basically the uh, the the benefit of this action will also have to be expressed in uh, in a monetary value, and uh, in the case of adaptation, uh, seeing that many um, uh, of the actions will uh, be uh, in linked to uh, to health, to mortality, to um, ecosystemic services, these are things that both uh, morally and technically it will be very difficult to assign a monetary value. So, for example, if you're talking about uh, human life, when we're talking about ecosystem, um, uh, ecosystemic services, et cetera, et cetera, it will be very difficult to have an economic uh, assessment of these issues. And so this is why there are different uh, methods that uh, you should consider. On the one hand, you have the cost effectiveness analysis, which also allows for a bit more flexibility because you will have the costs, um, which will be expressed in monetary values, but then the benefits can also be um, uh, expressed in different terms and in different units, not only in, in monetary values. So, for example, also the um, if you look at the mortality rate, for example, related to uh, heat waves, uh, then we can express the benefits in the number of deaths uh, um, that uh, we were able to uh, to limit uh, through the measures that we are taking um, and uh, what was the uh, ratio of, for example, health impacts related to a situation where we would not have taken action. So this allows also to, to uh, take into account for different actions. Um, however, what we observe is that in the field of adaptation, uh, usually the method which seems to be uh, the most used, um, especially by local uh, authorities, is that of a multi-criteria analysis, um, which really allows for a, a bigger uh, flexibility because it's uh, like it says, it really looks at a lot of different criteria, some of them being financial, but uh, some also uh, being completely unrelated um, to, uh, to financial criteria, uh, and uh, which is uh, more adapted to the really uh, cross-sectoral aspect of adaptation. The fact that you will have to look at a lot of the impacts in a lot of different sectors. Uh, and so uh, basically the, the criteria also will be uh, multiple. And so one example of uh, multi-criteria analysis in um, the domain of adaptation that you can find is in the uh, climate change adaptation strategy of the city of Vancouver in uh, Canada. So this is also uh, a strategy that we would encourage you to take a look at. You can find most of the documents in English um, 
uh, online. And so uh, this can also give you some examples of how uh, the city of Vancouver uh, uh, built up their action plan and what were the criteria that they used um, to uh, assess the different actions uh, that they implemented. So you have one example here on the screen. And though on the next slide, um, yes, we also uh, have some examples of the different criteria um, that you could use for uh, the multi-criteria multi analysis of your action portfolio. Uh, so, um, so on the one hand, of course, you still look at the cost benefit ratio, uh, when it is possible, uh, but, um, you also see, uh, look at things which are much more difficult to, to quantify, like the, uh, political, uh, acceptability. So, which is again, related to the level of awareness already present in the local authority, um, but also, ex um, the, uh, the benefit of uh, preparing action uh, before uh, the the risk or the negative impacts already hit in order to avoid future damage costs, for example, um, and to look at the uh, efficiency and the effectiveness of uh, the different measures that you want to implement to, to deliver adaptation. So this is just to give you basically um, uh, an example of the of the criteria that that you can apply for for your your analysis. And uh, so, yeah, this was uh, maybe a bit of uh, a methodolic, um, methodological um, introduction, and uh, I will uh, give the floor to Sandra for the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Francesca. Um, now, uh, we, um, we propose to see uh, the question, uh, the, um, uh, the different option of uh, adaptation you can uh, select in order to counteract the uncertainty. We talk about no regret, low regret, and uh, we win uh, options uh, in order to uh, select uh, adaptation action. Uh, these uh, types of um, action could be uh, also um, uh, articulated with the uh, set of uh, criteria presented by uh, Francesca. Um, for example, uh, no regret adaptation op option uh, concerns action, concern action uh, that will be always uh, uh, efficient, uh, whatever uh, uh, the climate change uh, will be. Um, low regret action uh, are relatively low cost and uh, provide uh, relatively large benefits under predicted future climates. And uh, we win options concerns the adaptation options which uh, articulate uh, co-benefits in uh, several uh, domains, social, uh, economical, uh, environmental uh, um, uh, domain. Uh, so it's uh, also interesting to have this view in order uh, to uh, select the uh, adaptation action to counteract the uncertainty and uh, also to uh, optimize uh, the solution you can uh, develop on your uh, own uh, territory. Um, Francesca uh, um, present you uh, the process to uh, uh, establish your uh, portfolio, uh, uh, your action plan, uh, first uh, uh, initial uh, action plan to uh, a final uh, action plan. And this is uh, an illustration uh, on how you can uh, organize or represent this uh, action plan with um, the um, uh, the objective with the um, with the um, characterization of the strategic objective uh, rely on, on uh, a link to uh, operational and uh, action uh, uh, in order to answer to this uh, to these uh, different uh, uh, strategic uh, objectives uh, you have uh, an uh, an example here with the uh, domain of the water uh, the first uh, uh, aim is to improve the quant quantitative and qualitative management of water resources, which is declined on the several strategic objectives, for example, reduce human and material damages, which is uh, also declined in uh, uh, several operational obje objectives and uh, actions. So it, this uh, illustration 
is uh, to help you to organize the way you can uh, structure your, uh, your uh, action plan. To make uh, your action plan operational, you can uh, detail each action organized in an action sheet. Um, um, uh, this uh, action uh, sheet could be perceived as a guarantee to uh, realize your action because a uh, project manager, a service department uh, uh, is defined, uh, the means are uh, estimated and, uh, and the indicator are uh, also uh, defined. Um, what we uh, observed, uh, some international uh, re study reports, the lack of uh, concretization of the adaptation action. Uh, if uh, uh, they note the progress of the planification with the energy action plan and uh, so on, uh, the challenge now is to operate to engage uh, the uh, adaptation on the, on the territories. Um, another illustration in order to link the uh, different level of the action plan with the uh, indicator. Here the example uh, refers to the uh, awareness, uh, refers to the formation in a given uh, region. Um, and for example, um, a strategy objective um, linked to this, uh, to this uh, aim uh, is the uh, is to raise awareness on adaptation issues among elected officials and territorial decision makers. And the uh, indicator uh, uh, which could be used is the number of people reached by uh, trainings or information campaigns and so on. Um, this illustration is also to help you to uh, organize uh, the information and to uh, uh, define what kind of indicators could you uh, could help you to uh, um, uh, assess uh, different uh, um, several uh, objectives, operational and uh, strategic uh, objective. Um, we can wonder what are the pur the, the purpose of the indicators uh, we have already uh, said, but uh, the, in the indicators uh, allow us to check the adaptation pathway. Uh, don't forget, we have uh, uh, talk about the adaptation adaptive management uh, so it's a way to understand if we are on the on the good way uh, the indicators um, uh, allow us to understand the efficacy of the actions implementation uh, um, um, is a way to appreciate the needs for uh, adjustment for, of the uh, actions and uh, it's uh, also a way to give a transparent framework to stakeholders and, uh, and the population. And so uh, um, this element uh, is linked to the evaluative question we are talking about, uh, Francisca is talking about at the beginning of this uh, presentation. Um, another way to consider the uh, uh, the assessment, the indicator. Uh, uh, there is an alternative approach which is called budget climate assessment. Uh, this uh, approach is developed by I4C. Uh, it's a French think tank uh, uh, which, are, which um, has developed this uh, alternative approach to appreciate the involvement of a local authority. Um, and this method is the, based on the budget, budget uh, climate, which is are uh, used for uh, finance uh, some uh, uh, some public uh, policies. So, um, is not an evaluation based on the impacts of the adaptation. It's uh, it's really an evaluation based on the, the uh, process uh, how the local authority. Uh, is engaged in uh, an adaptation uh, an adaptation process it's uh, it's quite interesting to have this uh, uh, this view uh, what we can say also it's um, uh, to assess to evaluate uh, the impacts of uh, uh, 
policy and adaptation, it's uh, very difficult because uh, uh, we, for most of the action, we can't see the results in uh, in short term. Uh, we have to um, uh, we have to uh, this action can take time, uh, for example, for the forest, and it's very difficult to um, evaluate if this uh, strategy and this action have a good uh, effects and we need time to uh, consider it. So uh, sometimes uh, monitoring and evaluation could be operate regarding the process uh, to have uh, um, a view of the, of the way the local authority um, engage uh, the uh, adaptation on the uh, on their uh, public uh, policies. Um, another illustration we would like to share with you is uh, uh, about the means. Um, I foresee uh, the same uh, structure we um, uh, we refer um, have. Um, suggest a representation of the cost uh, about adaptation and you have uh, three uh, components. Uh, you have the components of uh, environmental cost, uh, which means uh, uh, the condition to uh, um, um, to to develop uh, uh, the, the action we need to prepare uh, the local authority, the stakeholders, we need to um, um, to develop the formation, uh, the sensibilization, the awareness about uh, adaptation. This is the first group of cost. We have uh, the second group uh, is uh, concerned on the project cost, uh, which will be uh, dedicated to a study, to the project engineering. And the last uh, group uh, concern the uh, project uh, implementation. Uh, it could be interesting to have uh, also this um, uh, element in mind in order to understand what kind of cost uh, you can be um, uh, you, you you have to prepare uh, to develop your uh, your adaptation uh, strategy. Um, we also uh, uh, share you um, uh, an interesting ratio uh, which is developed by uh, an international organization. Uh, the Global Commission on Adaptation, and the, um, um, it, um, this organization um, uh, um, offer a new uh, argument uh, to uh, engage uh, adaptation uh, policy uh, by uh, because with the, this, the demonstration that uh, uh, investing in adaptation it will will uh, generate could generate. Uh, uh, benefits more important than the first uh, investment and uh, this is uh, we are in the same philosophy as uh, the Stern uh, report and so it could be interesting to have this uh, argument uh, to uh, uh, to develop uh, adaptation process. Um, we think that the most important is to start uh, to develop some action uh, in line with the main uh, text, uh, uh, to have identify uh, some uh, uh, the, 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 the project managers, the department which uh, will be uh, responsible to uh, for the development of this uh, action. Um, it's important to um, at the beginning, uh, we already uh, said uh, to organize the concertation, to organize the governance, to organize the transparency uh, between uh, each uh, uh, stakeholders uh, regarding the adaptation uh, process. And um, and we are always in process when we are on the an adaptation uh, uh, strategy. We need to improve uh, knowledge, uh, maybe to conduct a new uh, new studies to uh, better understand some uh, phenomena. Um, we already said that it's a question of territory, local question, and uh, and we we have seen uh, through the example that the vulnerability is not only a question of of, uh, of uh, climate. Uh, we have to consider some uh, social and economic uh, characteristic of the uh, of the uh, territory. Um, 
Maybe to conclude, just one uh, one slide regarding the uh, Ile-de-France uh, area. Uh, Institute Paris Region uh, have conducted a study to understand how the adaptation is integrated in the Energy Climate Action Plan in uh, Ile-de-France area. And uh, we observed that the adaptation is not the most important uh, regarding the volume uh, of action. And we note uh, also that the adaptation, adaptation actions are mainly um, linked to soft uh, actions uh, as um, this is a, a, a types of action which uh, describe uh, Francisca uh, uh, just uh, uh, in the, in, during the, the presentation. Soft actions uh, is uh, linked to um, uh, managerial uh, policy uh, uh, um, uh, action and uh, we see that we need uh, to um, uh, develop this uh, action uh, before we can engage some uh, operational uh, action and this observation for Ile de France area uh, are mainly the same in uh, other uh, other region in uh, in the world um, that's that's we can say that um, I would like to add something about uh, this uh, uh, adaptation module. Uh, we have um, uh, declined, developed this module uh, at the European level in uh, three cycles. We developed this module in uh, uh, national and regional uh, replication uh, during this um, this. Uh, uh, formation, we have time to develop some exercise about uh, indicators. Uh, we have time also to uh, uh, to conduct a, a practical exercise. We have uh, uh, developed a climate stake uh, card game, which uh, uh, it's a tool uh, in order to help to define some uh, uh, the main stakes at the level of uh, the territory. Uh, this morning you have a, a concentrated overview of uh, of uh, all these uh, elements and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, it's difficult for the interaction, but uh, it's uh, to give you uh, an overview of the kind of exercise we have uh, developed uh, during this, uh, uh, this uh, learning course and we uh, we observe and we note that uh, the participants of uh, different uh, countries um, uh, indicate uh, the same um, difficulties or the same levers uh, to engage or to go on on the uh, adaptation uh, process. Uh, we have to um, uh, continue to awareness the, um, the, the, the question of adaptation um, uh, specifically to the uh, elected uh, uh, officials, we have to continue to, uh, <coughs> sorry, to uh, explain, uh, to uh, create uh, conditions to uh, go on uh, on uh, uh, on adaptation. Uh, we also note that the use of the cartography it's a good tool uh, to understand the main stakes uh, at the level of the territory. If you have the possibility uh, to develop this tool, it's very uh, interesting.